Do you feel safe doing kind of what we did? We can try. Okay, okay so before you start, um, I think for your intention, what are we going to try to do? You're going to try to get the target, try to get the target gently. So to do so, you're going to approach from the top and slowly pause every once in a while once he's engaged with it. You can slowly bring it in and meet him part way, but not too far. Okay. And the moment that that happens, you're going to let him touch it with his upper mandible. Even better would be if he hits it with his tongue. You're gonna need to give it a try. So, I select exactly where the treat is. Okay. See how I slowly got to where I could reach it? Okay, the intention wasn't and the you're, same. Oh, and you have this. Mm -hmm. That's an easier target. Okay. So, just really, okay. you're trying to isolate that treat. You're uh, talking. Like this? Yeah. Okay. You're talking is a total trigger. You can't speak. Like so sorry, but every time you do, it gets. I'm tell you this, but could you just not? It gets. It got really bad, and I think that's why you couldn't deliver the treat successfully. Is you said like, "Good boy, Sam," and his feathers just went, and he pinned, and it just. I was like terrified for you in that moment. Yeah, me too. So just try not to talk. I think you should give the treat, Dave. Did you hear that? He just said good boy, where you said it last time. Guy, yeah, he's almost taken. He's taken first. Oh. Here, I watched him try to get Dave, like try to think through the logic of it. And again, I'm going to naturally push you. If you feel like you're going to get bitten, then by all means, um, we can change that. Also, I think we'll do a full size uh, one on the next one. Okay. going for the treat. Good. See, his lower mantle couldn't reach you. So logically, set yourself up for that. You're so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> He's got me so many times. I could, like, oh. I could feel I it. <laughs> that lower mantle is fixed. Okay. And so just think, like, I know the fear is there, believe me, but in these circumstances, he cannot bite you if you do just how we just did. Okay. Whenever you're pushing a bird through uncomfortable or fear, you want to end on an easy note. So I think I'm going to try to end on a relatively easy target, see if he does it for me. Um, but we'll see here. See that lower mandible again? It's like I've got the distance gauge with him now. We'll get there. But yeah, so we'll, we'll pause him on that because he had a really good session. You both really pushed through some things. He's been hormonally triggered unknowingly for called a year and a half. Um, and it's just progressively gotten worse. And going back to the checklist, there's whatever it was, that one final one put him over the edge and he's been living at that edge um, with no outlet. I love how long it takes. You guys both communicate. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing the thing. <laughs> 
just totally forgot what I was saying. You were just saying that like this scenario is the worst that it's gonna look like. It should be the worst it's gonna look like. Yeah, it should be the worst. As you guys do training, keep in mind, food, water, shelter, probably not best to train him in the room where he sees his cage. Take him to the kitchen or somewhere else on a tea stand. Do you guys have a tea stand? We've got a wooden one. We need to get a metal one. Base is 17 pounds, so if you get into flight training with him in the future, he's not going to knock it over. And then the the three pieces are aluminum, so that's all really lightweight. Um, and uh, we use metal because he can't passively aggressively shred the wooden perch because he's mad that you're close. There's like there's nothing. It really isolates, as does this chair. It isolates how much he can move and what he can destroy, and it makes him focus on what we want from him. Um, it's taken us like 10 years to find somebody to build these right, and it actually ended up being an aircraft mechanic. I landed in this field, and it's like a dirt field. And I'm like, this is North Idaho. This is not landable in about a month. What do you do in your off season? He's like, oh, I do whatever. And I saw some as well. And I'm like, here's the project, and it's it couldn't be better. So. Um, they're built by aircraft mechanics now. But yeah, yeah and I think what separate room. Dave means by that especially is because once you get that diet right, he's going to be way more enthusiastic about these treats. Like, I know you guys said that he loves these pistachios and stuff, but like he should be eating them where he's consuming the whole thing, not breaking them apart where he doesn't care how many pieces fall to the bottom. Like the enthusiasm that I'm seeing or the lack thereof towards these treats is like, darn, no wonder you're, you're terrified because it might be more reinforcing to nip you than take an actual treat. Um, so I think once you do have that diet and that sleep solidified, the neutral zone that he will be functioning in, you get to see. Because right now you just get all the feathers and it's really intense and I think it's, you guys are scaring each other. Power pause? Yeah, we could do that because yeah, it's really intense mm -hmm. and we don't have food motivation, so yes. Yeah, so we don't have as much food motivation. So when you look at the, the training quadrant, you have plus and minus reinforcement, plus and minus punishment. Birds do things for two reasons, gain pleasure, avoid pain. Um, reinforcement, that whole upper half, <laughs> In the herd is all those balls this time, he's figured it out. Oh, sorry, that's too small. <laughs> yeah, I know. Here, try that one. Hello. There. <laughs> um, so reinforcement increases the likelihood for that behavior. Punishment decreases the likelihood for behavior. So if you're looking at um, the whole quadrant, we really want to work with reinforcement. Um, the plus and minus side of things is technically called positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement. Um, if you guys leave here, you had a positive time, means you had a good time, right? If you guys left here, you said we had a negative time, means you had a bad time. Well, positive and negative reinforcement don't mean good and bad reinforcement. So we refer to it quite often as plus reinforcement. You're adding something. That is, what is reinforcement? Would it increase the likelihood of that behavior? Or we call it minus reinforcement, which is subtracting something that is going to increase the likelihood for the behavior we want to see more of. So what we're about to do, we call the power pause. It is working in the reinforcement half of the quadrant, but it's technically minus reinforcement. The reinforcement that we're getting rid of, we're subtracting, we're taking away, is you. And the thing you're going to like most about it is you don't have to deliver a treat. <laughs> <laughs> the treat is you leaving. For Daniel, we're going to add you to the equation by additionally adding a plus reinforcement. So after you hear a click, you will be administering a treat. Okay? So the idea behind this is there's some distance where Sam's okay with your presence. It could be 100 feet, it could be 100 yards. We're going to find where that is. And we're also setting up the scenario where he's like, hey, favorite human's right here, let's get it on. And you're gonna interrupt this, right? So there's some things that dynamically we may need to change. That's why training is so fluid and it's really difficult to give like, this is exactly what we do. We're gonna walk together carefully here, just very slowly, slowly, slowly. We're looking for the first sign of fear or discomfort. So we didn't get anything like aggressive, but um, 
be so hyper focused on Daniel that we may have to adapt and change something. Daniel, I would have you would come back here with all the treats. And I think I want you in the chair closest to me. Okay. Walk forward together. Until we see the very first signs of fear. It was like most of the top of the head that went up that was really obvious, like signed this time. It was just like the the nair stuff that just barely puffed. And I knew that if you stopped there, we could get calmer quicker okay. than last time. I felt like it took a while for us to get him to okay. diminish. So that's why I called that a little earlier. Okay. So watch Jamie and I'll just be a backup if you miss her. Okay. He's definitely not a lost cause. There's just a, I don't even want to say if there's a long way to just offer it again. Mm -hmm. You ran out of know, treats? I'd say there's a long way to go, but um, the, you do have a lot of work in front of you, but it's again, intentional, intentional work. Yep. And I'd put like just drop O2 in there and 
whenever we put our guys back after free flying, it's like, hey, here's, here's a handful. Okay. Because again, in the outdoor world, we want to make sure that they want to go into their travel carrier. Right. Otherwise, they're not going to come to me because they know that eventually I'm going to put them in the carrier. We want the carrier to be so positive and, and then sleeper time cage. If it is a larger version of this, it's going to feed right into that same idea of like, hey, a travel cage is awesome. My name's Daniel. I'm Kaylee. Um, we brought our bird Sammy in. He's a green wing macaw. He's 25 years old. I was concerned, honestly, even just getting him here. He has major hormonal issues, um, and I honestly didn't even think we'd get him out of the cage. And we had a whole list of things to ask, but once we got rolling, um, you guys addressed everything. And even getting him out of the cage and all those interactions, I didn't think we were going to have any interactions at all. I thought we were just going to be talking. Yeah, I never, I didn't think we were going to be able to get him out of the cage at all. We didn't think, we didn't even know if we would get him in the cage to come to here. To come here, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, that was amazing. And being able to interact and we just learned so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>